as you can see, uh, if I can compute a derivative of the model with respect to theta using backpropagation, or in linear uh, regression case, I can compute that analytically, right? And the perform an optimization, then I'm set. And in particular, uh, last lecture, we discussed the how to solve quadratic optimization problems very efficiently, right? And in the linear programming, in, in the linear model case, in the linear regression case, uh, this optimization, I mean, this is, uh, uh, this is if, if this uh, is taken as an L2 norm and I square uh, the norm, uh, I get actually exactly a quadratic minimization problem, which I can solve using Newton's method uh, for one step. So, so this is a, a regression. And uh, classification problems can be solved uh, with a pretty similar way. For a regression problem, uh, sorry, for a classification problem, usually the output of the model is not going to be exactly uh, a discrete number, but a set of numbers, a set of probabilities for each discrete choice. Okay, so so let me uh, let me write it uh, down a little bit more. So uh, my my model of x and theta for the classification case is usually a set of probabilities p1, uh, p2, up to pk. If I have k different uh, uh, categories, I can uh, I can choose in the output, right? For example, if an image can be classified into the numbers between zero and nine, then every for every image, I want to produce 10 different probabilities that as to one, saying that how confident the model is that this image represents a particular number. Okay, and uh, uh, usually we can also formulate uh, uh, this into the, the classification into an optimization problem. Okay. So uh, this is basically saying that I want to minimize over all the parameter theta. And the most common objective function to use is so-called the cross entropy objective function. So uh, I'm not going to write down the whole formula here, but uh, uh, cross entropy. Basically, you have a model xi theta that's producing a bunch of probabilities. And I want to uh, plug in that uh, probability into my particular output, yi, to see that how does the set of uh, probabilities measure, uh, how correct is the set of probabilities, right? Okay, and uh, if, uh, if I predict uh, the correct outcome with a high probability, then this gives me a small cost function. If I predict the outcome uh, with a small probability and predicts the uh, some wrong outcome with a higher probability, then the cost function is going to be high. So, uh, so this cross entropy function uh, is nice that uh, it it both describes the desired outcome and is very easy to take derivatives with respect to. So it's easy to compute the derivative of the cross entropy function and then propagate the derivatives to the derivative with respect to the tunable parameters theta. So uh, this is gonna give us a, um, a, a good way to optimize for this model to uh, give us better and better predictions in probabilities. Okay, and uh, to end uh, uh, this overview, we want to uh, give away of how to measure the quality of a linked model. So uh, one thing that's important uh, is that the quality of a linked model should not be measured on the training data. Let me say, uh, let me give an example. So if I have a, a very simple problem, x versus y, and I uh, uh, give a bunch of uh, uh, data points, so these are the training points. 
I have five turning points, and uh, uh, you can decide what model to use to fit onto this. The simplest model I can uh, I can use on this problem is that uh, okay, I can say y is a constant, and I can figure out which constant would best describe the data. The best uh, the quantity that best describes the data if I use the uh, regression. If I use the regression problem, I want to minimize the average, the discrepancy between the constant and the output is probably something like that, right? Or I can say, let me increase, uh, so, so in this case, uh, theta y equal to theta. So that's uh, the first model. If I want to increase how we match the out output, we may say that, oh, I want to fit a linear model. I want to fit a line into this. Right in this case, I want to uh, model y as a uh, ax plus b, which I let me write as theta one x plus theta two. So theta one is the slope, theta two is the intercept. Obviously, I decrease the, the average. I can decrease the average the uh, discrepancy between the output and the training data because the first model is actually a special case of the second model. Right, I mean, by optimizing the second model, we can start with the first model, which simply has a theta one equal to zero, and further optimize to minimize the discrepancies. But the question is, is the model better? The answer is that I don't know, because I can go to more extreme examples. So we have increased from the zeroth order polynomial to a, sec, uh, to, to a first order polynomial. Why don't we increase further, right? We can increase to a second order polynomial, a quadratic, a third order polynomial, a cubic, or even a fourth order polynomial. So if we go to a fourth order polynomial, right? So let's say uh, the fifth model, a fourth order polynomial, that can actually fit the five points Exactly. So a fourth order polynomial probably can look something like this. Right, that's a possible example of a fourth order polynomial. So y would be equal to uh, theta one x to the fourth plus theta two x third plus theta three x square, etc. So we have a fifth order polynomial that fits the five points exactly. Is that going to be a better model? Well, if you just look at the training data, you would say yes, right? However, if you think of the training data just as a finite sample of the potentially infinite number of population that are not in the training set, then this is probably not going to be a better model. 